Hello, I'm District 3 Commissioner Terenia Carthen, and welcome to the Early Voter Get Out the Vote Forum. I would like for you to help me welcome our Director of Elections here in Douglas County, Mr. Milton Kidd. Today, we are going to answer a lot of questions in regards to early voting, the ballot system, and how to ensure that your vote is your voice. Again, we want your vote to be your voice. So join me and Director Kidd as we help to ensure that every citizen in Douglas County counts. Good afternoon. Thank you, Director Kidd, for agreeing to join me today. Um, can you give the viewers who are watching this just a little information about who you are and what you do here in the county? Yes, ma'am. My name is Milton Kidd. I am the Director of Elections and Voter Registration for Douglas County. I've been in this capacity since 2018. What I do is I am basically the administrator for the elections and registration process completely for Douglas County. Okay, so you get your information from the state and the state laws get implemented in Douglas County for elections? For, for elections and voter registration, we are under the purview of the county, but with the direction of election law, which is dictated by the state election board, which uh, the secretary of state heads the state election board and his office uh, is the state election board and they disseminate the rules for the elections process, the elections and registration process for the state of Georgia. So these essentially are laws that are passed by the state legislature. Okay, got you. So let's let's start. We know that early voting is upon us within a week. And so, but actually, uh, early voting has already really begun, right? Early voting in person starts next week, October 12th, is it? Yes, ma'am. The election has, is on the way as we speak. 40, 49 days before an election day, which for this election is November 3rd, you start mailing out your military or your cover ballots. We began that on September the 15th. On September the 18th, we began to disseminate all of the absentee ballot applications that were received prior to that date for the county. So the election has started and individuals throughout Douglas County are casting ballots at this particular time. That's uh, absentee by mail or vote by mail, whichever terminology you want to use. It is all the exact same process. It is also the same process that has been in use here in Georgia for the last 10 to 15 years. Got you. So again, early vote by mail and um, early voting is the same. Absentee? Yeah. Yes, absentee voting and vote by mail is the exact same thing, no matter which terminology you refer to it as. I'm so glad you cleared that up because a lot of people do question that. Like, you know, so I'm, I'm so glad we're having this conversation. Um, will the elections office need poll workers for early, early voting and the day of election? And if so, what is the age and how does one get hired? We have already begun our uh, selection of poll workers. If you want to be a poll worker in Douglas County, the process is to go on the county's website. Under the Human Resources Department, we have a standing poll worker application. That application essentially feeds your information into our portal. When one of my teammates uh, will contact you and set up an interview and go over the qualifications. The major qualifications for being a poll worker are being at least 16 years of age, a U.S. citizen, a county, a resident of the county in which you live, having uh, the ability to read and write, and the rest of it as far as what you will be doing during the elections process, we go over that because that's situational specific to whatever uh, position you're hired for within a polling location, whether that is advanced voting or uh, in-person uh, voting or election day. I'm so glad you said that because I think that's key. Um, for election day, I believe most schools are out. And so to me, this is a good 
time for our young people in Douglas County to get a chance to witness how the election process actually happens. And not only would they get a chance to be involved in it or witness it at 16, 17, and 18, um, they get a chance to get a little pocket change while they're doing it. So I think that that is, you know, that that's great. So I really wanted people to know that if you have your young people who are 16 or older and they're interested, this would be a, a great opportunity for them to see democracy at work firsthand. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Douglas County was at the forefront of initiating a program to which we call the Student Ambassador Program. This is a program that's a partnership between Douglas County Board of Elections and all of the high schools in Douglas County, which we use to recruit students who are civically minded and want to participate in the elections process. All Douglas County has 25 election day precincts, and all 25 election day precincts will have students working in the capacity of a poll worker on election day. That's awesome. Okay. So now that we got that out the way, there are some questions that um, I have for you in regards to our ballot. So I know to request a ballot that most people can go to celebratedouglascounty.com and click on the, um, the elections banner that's on the page. I think we have one up on the page now, right? Yes. How yes. else can they request a ballot? To request an absentee ballot, there are a couple different ways. We have the tried and true method of paper. That paper application uh, can be uh, downloaded from uh, the county's website or the state's website uh, as well. But there's also, as of this election, there is a new way in which you can request absentee ballots. There is an absentee ballot request website. That direct link, which will be posted as well on our website, is www.ballotrequest.sos.ga.gov. Once again, www.ballotrequest.sos.ga.gov and ballot request is spelled out. Awesome. So I know that there were several mailers that I received that um, I got in the mail that stated I could request my ballot as well. So any of those that people are getting in the mail asking them to request their ballots, um, are those okay to utilize as well? And do those come to you? I'm glad you asked that question because there is a lot of misinformation floating around in the community. Douglas County Board of Elections and Registration did disseminate our own uh, pre-field mailer, which is a voter request form. This is not the absentee ballot itself. This is simply allowing you to request an absentee ballot be sent to you. We submitted those forms, but the laws of the state of Georgia, which we all have to follow, allow other organizations to submit mailers uh, to individuals. They purchase uh, either election voter list or they may get a phone list. They mm -hmm. even sometimes get lists of individuals who live in a household, which is why sometimes you'll get three and four of the same blank uh, voter registration not voter registration, the same absentee ballot applications. Mm -hmm. You'll get two or three, even if you've already submitted an application to our office. Don't be alarmed. These are just blank applications until you send them in. Okay. I will say too, though, we have a process in place of, if we receive multiple applications, we will only process one of those applications. The rest will be marked as duplicates and added to your voter file. I am so glad you said that. So for those individuals, especially our seniors who really want to vote, since they probably won't be voting in person, they really want to get it right and they want to cast their ballot. So they're requesting their absentee ballot through the application process. And there, you know, there are some questions as to if I fill all of these out, what will happen? And I'm so glad you cleared it up to say, if you fill it out and you mail it in, you, you all are keeping track of the applications. And so those will just be duplicates. Once you mail out the one ballot, the others will, will be duplicated and you will not mail out duplicate ballots. Yes, ma'am. There, there's some confusion with people. I know on certain social medias, people are saying that they got multiple ballots. Those are not ballots you got. Those are actually application request form. But once right. again, if you supplied one request form, we will process that uh, one request form and the rest will be marked in your voter file as duplicate applications. 
Wonderful. Uh, since we're on that subject, how long does it take to receive the requested absentee ballot? Okay. Now, I will say this too, though. Our office can control a myriad of things. Uh -huh. Mail is not one of them. By that, I mean we can put an application in the mail, but I cannot give you an exact time frame. I am uh, asking uh, individuals to wait a two-week period between, right now we're further along from the elections process, so a two-week period between the time when you submit an application to our office to you receive receive the ballot. If you have not received it in that two week time frame, then you can give our office a call and we can check on the status of that application and make sure that it's been issued. If it has been issued, we now have a way of looking and seeing that we've mailed that ballot. Once it's been mailed, the state has set up a tracking uh, form where you can track uh, your absentee ballot uh, application. That link will be on the county's website as well. Okay, I use that. Actually, I didn't use it. My daughter used it. Uh, ballot tracks, and so yes. she, yes, yeah, she told me that you could request it, and that they will send you um, text messages as to when your ballot goes out and when the uh, elections office receives the ballot back in. Now that yeah, that tracker is linked to our office. It's not uh, actually tracking it with the post office. Okay. But once uh, you see in the system that we've sent it, mm -hmm. it has been transmitted from our office. That is awesome. I think that that would give um, a lot of voters some um, some relief and some assurity as to they know that you guys received their ballot and that it is in your possession. So. Yeah. Um, I, I think that's a great tool to use. So I would encourage everyone, please use ballot tracks. Again, it will be on CelebrateDouglasCounty.com. So make sure you check out our new and improved website to get the uh, information that we are sharing with you here today. Um, so tell me this, if you have not received your ballot by let's say October 30th, should you be worried? It uh, By October the 30th, if you have not received your ballot, in all honesty, at that point, by the 30th, I would be making arrangements to vote in an alternative method. Okay. But uh, that October 30th date is, that's the last day to actually submit an absentee ballot request to our office. Okay. But I would encourage anyone that is thinking about submitting for an absentee ballot to go ahead and get that request in now. Today is September the 30th. This is a full month. That gives you a long time to be, uh, have your request in and have your ballot back into our office before election day. Don't wait until that 30th day to request your ballot. You legally can, but uh, best practice is to go ahead and request now. Got it. So tell me, what are the must-haves for a return ballot? to count? For a return ballot to count, on the outer envelope of that ballot, there is a signature line. That signature line is essentially your lifeline to indicate that this is you. We, when we receive that application, uh, when we receive that ballot back, we uh, take a look at the original application. We look at your driver's license. We look at any previous applications that you've signed with our office, and we compare those signatures. Sometimes individuals may uh, get to the point of they have multiple signatures or don't remember how they signed their initial application. A good uh -huh. rule of thumb to deal with that issue is to say, pull out your driver's license or ID. Look at the way in which you sign that and sign that ballot in that fashion because we have access to those records and we match those records also against that ballot as well. I'm but so glad you said that. I will say this too, though. If there's ever any question about any uh, issue which you've submitted to us on the initial application, please provide your phone number. We will call you. We will, before we deny a ballot or anything like that, we will try to rectify the situation or work with you to get cleared up any inconsistencies in your voter file first. So I just want to reiterate, this is why it is so important to early vote, because a lot of these things can get cleared up so that 
everyone can make sure that their vote counts because we know that your vote is your voice. And so here in Douglas County, we want every single vote to count. So again, make sure you sign that ballot, pull out your driver's license or your voter ID and sign it the same way you did the day that you took that picture for the state. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> and do it early so that if there are any discrepancies, uh, our voter registration office can call you and get those taken care of. This is good stuff. Thank you. Okay, so are there dedicated spots in the county that people can drop their ballots? Say they don't want to actually put them in the mail, because like you said, you can't control the mail. Once it leaves your office or once it's on the way to your office, you can't control it. But what you can control are some ballot boxes that we yes. have around the county. Okay. Yes. <laughs> We currently have a ballot box in front of the Douglas County Courthouse at 8700 Hospital Drive. The current ballot box as of this Friday will be replaced with a larger ballot box uh, on Friday uh, to accommodate more ballots. But also uh, activated on Friday, which is October the 2nd, we will have a ballot box installed and active for in front of Boundary Waters Aquatic Center, Deer Lick Park Recreation Center, Dog River Library. As of October the 15th, we will have a box in front of the old courthouse. Uh, we're working on Hunter Park uh, location. We're also uh, working on locations in front of uh, the other uh, two libraries located in front of, well, located in front of the other two libraries in Douglas County. You can always find the most up-to-date and complete list of all of our Dropbox locations on our website at CelebrateDouglasCounty.com. Under the Department tab of Elections and Registration, you'll see on the right-hand corner, uh, on the right-hand side when you enter the page, you'll mm -hmm. see a Dropbox. That will give you a, a list of where the drop box. We also have pictures on there of where those drop boxes are located on those lo at those locations as well. That's excellent. So again, if someone does not want to mail your ballot, we do have drop boxes set located around the county so that the voters can drop their ballots in those boxes. And those boxes are secure, right, Director Kidd? Yes, by law, uh, there are certain security measures that have to be uh, taken into account and have to be followed, including a uh, video uh, surveillance and monitoring system of those boxes during a 24-hour uh, period. Uh, those boxes have to be securely fastened to the ground. There's a myriad of, of other security measures that okay. have to go in place to even have those drop boxes. Awesome. And so the only people that are allowed to take those ballots out of the ballot box are employees of the elections office. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So that way people will know that their ballots are being handled um, only by those individuals that have been trained and are in the, uh, in the office with the elections and registration. Yes. And, um, <laughs> The old analogy of the buddy system is still in play here too, though. It requires okay. two individuals signing off on the collection of any uh, ballot boxes throughout uh, Douglas County. And then those have to be surrendered to one of the registers of Douglas County. And they also have to sign off on those transmittal sheets. The transmission of those ballots is done in a specific way and that's tracked as well. Okay. That's good to know. So um, we know that the last day to register to vote is October 5th. Is that correct? Yes. The last day to make any changes to your account, whether you need to register to vote, whether you're changing your name, whether you're changing your address, you're moving between counties, October 5th is the deadline. If you have moved within the county, you may have updated uh, with the Postal Service that is not your elections uh, department. Check uh, your registration at www.mvp.sos.ga.gov and you can see the most up-to-date information on your voter registration. There is also a phone app that is in the Google Play Store or the Android uh, or uh, Android, uh, Android Play Store or Apple. Uh, <laughs> 
on Apple, okay. right? iTunes Store, yeah, right? Yeah, Apple iTunes Store, <laughs> Google Play Store, and okay. that's G A S O S. G A S O S. The logo is um, the state of Georgia in orange, and it was green now, and it says Secure Vote. Awesome. So again, if you need to, and I, I would encourage everybody now while you're watching this or listening to us, take out your phone yes. or go to your computer and just quickly check to make sure that your registration is up to date. Check your polling location. Make sure that you are still seen as an eligible voter. That way, whether you vote in person or you vote by um, mail-in ballot, you're sure to have the correct um, people on your ballot because that too um, aligns with where you live, where you are in the county, correct? Yes, whether you use G-A-S-O-S or the My Voter page on your desktop computer, this will allow you to pull your sample ballot as well. Oh, that that's sample, good. That sample ballot that you pull from this website will be your individual sample ballot. These are all the races that you're voting on. On the county's website, we have what's posted what is called a composite sample ballot. A composite sample ballot is all possible choices. You don't live in multiple districts, but this gives you an idea of who all is on the ballot. But when you use my voter page or you use the GASOS app, it pulls your individual voter information. Oh, that's good. All right, so for those of you out there, I would encourage you again, utilize these tools so that you can see the sample ballot. And then that way you can make um, good conscious decisions on who your choices for these elected offices are. It's good to be able to look up the names and look um, at what the uh, the candidates are, how and what the candidates are representing so that you can um, make an educated decision on who will represent you in these offices. So thank you for that. Uh, if I decided that I mailed in my application and I got an absentee ballot, but for whatever reason, I'm still not feeling safe about mailing it through the postal service or dropping it in a drop box. I decide that day that um, I want to uh, bring it to your elections office. Is that allowed? Yes, it is allowed to bring it to our elections office and turn it in that way. Another issue that some voters, some individuals, I ask that you make a plan for the way that you're going to vote, but I do know that sometimes people change their minds. So you have individuals that have requested an absentee ballot, have gotten that absentee ballot, mm -hmm. but are going to choose to either early vote uh, or vote uh, at the polls on election day. If you've requested an absentee ballot and you have that absentee ballot, bring it with you. My staff at that time will cancel out that absentee ballot and allow you to vote in person as well. Okay, so again, if they would like to, they can bring it into the elections office and you all are there Monday through Friday? Yes, we are Monday uh, through Friday, eight to five. During the time frame of early voting, my office will be open eight to six, the same hours as our polling locations. Great, so eight to six on the first floor of the courthouse? Yes, ma'am, starting October 12th, we'll be here eight to six. Eight to six. Right now we're eight to five. Eight to five, Monday through Friday. And again, if you decide that you want to do in-person voting or day of voting, bring the ballot with you. Bring your ballot with you and your ID with you and uh, Director Kidd and his team will take care of you to ensure that your vote counts. Yes. Wonderful. Now, one good thing since we're uh, mentioning early voting too, early voting starts October the 12th and continues to October the 30th. Early voting also has a Saturday voting. That's October the 24th here at the courthouse. That Saturday, we will be here 9 to 4 at the courthouse. But we have a myriad of locations throughout Douglas County that we will be uh, operating as early voting locations. We okay. have, the, these are listed on our website as well, but we have the courthouse, the main courthouse at 8700 Hospital Drive. We have Boundary Waters Aquatic Center, Dog River Library, Deer Lick Park, the old courthouse, and we even have our senior voting center at the Woody Fight Senior Center. 
Those uh, Boundary Waters, Dog River, and Deer Lake will be open October 19th through the 30th. Okay. The Senior Center will be open October 19th through the 23rd. And we do anticipate, although we're encouraging individuals to vote early, I know that there are <laughs> going to be some people that come in uh, on the tail end. So mm -hmm. October the 30th, which is the last day of early voting, we have partnered with two of our largest election day precincts mm -hmm. to turn into advanced voting locations on that last day of advanced voting to add surge capacity for Douglas County. This is a great partnership and I want to thank our partners at the Church of Chapel Hill and Atlanta West Pentecostal for agreeing to do this for the voters of Douglas County. Oh, that is excellent. And Church of Chapel Hill is in District 3. They are always a great partner uh, within the county, so I'm excited to hear that. So again, we will have three locations on October 30th where people can Saturday vote. Saturday? No. Saturday, no. uh, October 30th is yeah. uh, a Friday. The last a day Friday. for early voting is a Friday. The only oh. Saturday voting is October the 24th. October 24th. Great. So again, October 24th is the only Saturday voting here in Douglas County. And October 30th, again, is the last day to vote in Douglas County. And we have extra partners who will help to ensure that everybody who wants to vote on that day before Election Day voting can vote. Yes, October the 30th, the, that Friday, legally speaking, that's the last day that you can have advanced voting. Advanced voting ends the Friday prior to an election. This is election law here. <laughs> that's good to know. Uh, so tell me this, if I decide you know what? I'm I'm running. Um, it is election day. It is November 3rd. I, I had every intention, Director Kid, to get that ballot into you. However, I don't even have time to run home and get the ballot. I just need to stop and go ahead and cast my vote. What happens if I show up and I don't have the ballot? If you show up and you do not have the ballot, we have what is called an affidavit. That affidavit indicates that you either did receive the ballot and do not have it with you, or you never received that absentee ballot. We will process and have you sign off on this affidavit. We will cancel out that absentee ballot that was issued, and you will be allowed to vote in person. There's a procedure in place for that situation as well. Wonderful. So you guys have thought of everything and, and have us covered because we We're definitely, yes, we want everything to. again. <laughs> I'm glad. And I know it takes a lot. It takes a lot of hands on deck. It takes a lot of preparation. As a matter of fact, before we even got on this call, you, you, you were preparing and, and doing other things. So I really appreciate you taking time uh, to do this. Uh, tell me, are there peak times that we should avoid if we decide to advance vote? Uh, okay. It's hard to give a, a time frame for peak times. I will say this, uh, with working people tend to vote earlier in the mornings or around lunchtime. Those tend to be our heavier times, mm -hmm. but due to the nature of the current election season, we are unprecedented time frames right now. I can only give you speculations <laughs> on past elections, but if, uh, June uh, 9th and the other elections this year have taught me if you think it's going to be busy it's probably going to be even busier than you think. Got you. So in other words, pack your patience, bring a book and just be ready to cast your ballot when you get in there. This is, this is this is a good thing. Although uh, we live in a society that wants instant results and wants everything fast, I believe that the more people participating in the electoral process is good for the process as a whole, because the ballot box is the one way in which you can have a direct impact on your community. This is you electing the individuals that represent you. All of us are taxpaying citizens, whether or not you own a home, you pay sales taxes. So you're a taxpaying citizen. Amen. Why not have a uh, voice in your own representation? That is so true. And that's really why we're doing this. We want everybody to know that your vote truly is your voice and it speaks the loudest. If you really want to make an impact, 
you got to vote. It, it's great to, to march. It's great to protest. It's great to send those wonderful emails that you send me. But where it really counts is at the ballot box because you tell everybody who and what you stand for when you show up to cast your vote. Yes, so, ma'am. Issuing mandates to individuals. There, there you go. You're issuing mandates. So tell me, if I want to, can I take family members or other people into the voting um, booth with me? The state of Georgia allows anyone uh, to assist a voter who the voter chooses. There is a process in place where on the assisted party's application, you will sign a document. But yes, you can take an individual into the voting booth and they can assist you with the process as well. Okay. We have those individuals within um, our county and I will call them season saints. Um, do our seasoned saints have to stand in long lines if they come up and there is a, you know, quite a long line? Do our senior citizens or our seasoned saints have um, seniority? During the hours of nine to four, during early voting, mm -hmm. individuals who are above the age of 65 are allowed uh, to be able to be pulled out of line and uh, escorted to the front of polling locations. But I will offer uh, this caveat to that. There are, will be a myriad of individuals that meet this requirement. So you may be pulled out of one line and uh, placed in a smaller line, but it may still be a line okay. due to the number of individuals showing up uh, at polling locations. This is why I strongly encourage people that may have issues with lines to look at all of their options for voting. There are a myriad of, of options for voting, including early voting, including absentee by mail that will allow you to avoid some of the lines on election day. Election day is not the only day to vote, it's the last day to vote. Say that again. I love that. <laughs> if you've been around, if you've driven through Douglas County, you've seen some of the orange uh, signs that are on the side of roadways. They do state this and they state our advanced voting uh, times. But uh, November 3rd is not the only day to vote. It's the last day to vote. I want people to begin to get away from the idea of just an election day. We have an election season. Advanced voting lasts for 21 days. With absentee balloting, you can start to request an absentee ballot 180 days before an election. That's a six month period. So elections are longer than just a single day. Mm -hmm. Now, that patience and that understanding also extends to the back end of the elections process as well, because voters have that have requested absentee ballots, as long as they're postmarked by November 3rd, we will still continue to count those ballots for three days after the election. So any election results that you see, those are unofficial and incomplete results until the certification of the elections process. I'm so glad you said that. Uh, I do recall the last election we had that um, you all received so many absentee ballots, which was great. I, I, I was like, wow, it, it was really good to see it. But you guys were still counting those ballots the day after the election and just to ensure that every ballot counted. And you had, uh, or, or if you can, go into a little bit about those that you invite to watch the ballots to be counted. Can you okay. talk about that? Yes, ma'am. Legally speaking, both political parties involved in the electoral process and candidates that are on the ballot are, uh, are able to submit individual observers to observe the counting of ballot process. The law uh, requires those individuals to notify our office 21 days prior to an election with the individuals that they are going to be placing on these observation panels. But uh, everything that we do is open to the general public, including our absentee balloting process. And we encourage individuals to come out and observe these processes, come out and be a part of these processes. 
the elections office is comprised of individuals that live, work, and play in Douglas County. So these are your your uh, citizens, your neighbors, your friends, your families that are already involved in this process. But uh, the political parties are able to place uh, representatives inside uh, the rooms where we're counting, and they do have those representatives. They are also allowed to submit names of individuals who act uh, on what are called vote review panels. Vote review panels are used if there are any straight marks on a ballot, if a decision has to be made uh, about the intent of a voter, it has to be signed off by both political parties. This and they great. are involved in this process completely. Completely. This is excellent information because I don't think a lot of individuals know how open and transparent uh, the voting process is. So each individual party, Republican or Democrat, can have someone from that party called an election review panel to come up and watch the opening and the counting of those ballots. They just have to do it 21 days in advance to give you those names. Okay, it's two parts to that. Okay. The, the parties submit names of uh, elections observers. That's the 21-day uh, period before. Okay. But there is also a second part, which these are other individuals of the same uh, political parties as well. So sometimes uh, in smaller elections, it may be the same group of people, but in most cases, these are different groups of people. Okay. But they're also... Uh, able to place names and legally they're required to do this they're required to give me the names of individuals that are going to serve on the vote review panel the vote review panel any ballot that's torn that has to be duplicated that uh the will of the voter is not clearly indicated or is a slight overvote or anything like that those are stray marks that mm -hmm. ballot is transferred to this vote review panel. That vote review panel reviews the ballot, tries to determine the will of the voter, and both political parties sign off on that. This is great, great information. Uh, so tell me this. Um, I've been a, a poll watcher and a, and a poll worker, and it never fails. Someone will come into the uh, voting location and they're at the wrong polling location and they don't have time to get to where they should vote. I think the last one I did, someone, uh, it showed once we checked the uh, the state roster that they were uh, actually registered in Cobb County, but now they lived in Douglas County. And the lady did not have time to go back to Cobb County. In that case, what should that individual do? They didn't see this direct a kid. They didn't hear us say, check your voter registration now. Check your voter registration. <laughs> now, if it is a voter within the same county, you're able to cast a provisional ballot. A provisional ballot means that you're voting, well, there are different provisional ballots, but in this case, this will be cast in a provisional ballot because you're what are called the code section is OP or out of precinct. You're out of your voting precinct. Mm -hmm. Now, within county, an OP voter, essentially the races that are countywide races that they vote on, those will count. But here's the sticky part of that is that does not transfer between counties. Got gotcha. you. You are, as a voter in the state of Georgia, we're legally required to give you a provisional ballot if there is any uh, question as to whether or not you are supposed to vote in this polling location. But uh, after uh, that election, those ballots come back to our office to which we have to review those ballots and make sure that you are a Douglas County registered voter. If you are not a Douglas County voter, uh, voter uh, then you will receive notification as to the status of that ballot. We can only legally count the ballots for Douglas County registered voters. Like I say, those out of precinct voters will get to vote on countywide issues, but you want to make sure that you're in your correct precinct because you have what are called district specific races. Right. You yourself are a district commissioner. You represent a portion of Douglas County as your district. Your right. voters are encompassed within a geographical region. 
the uh, ballot for those geographical voters or at those precincts. So if you went to a precinct outside of that jurisdiction, their provisional ballot would not have those district races on there. So in order to make sure that everybody that you can legally vote for, check your information early, make a plan to vote, be intentional with your voting. This is a fundamental right treated as such. This is great information. That's why we uh, press. Don't just say, yes, I'm registered to vote. Make sure you know where you are going to vote. And if you're not sure, again, request an absentee ballot. Request that ballot so that it can be mailed to you and so that you can make sure that all of your information is correct within the state of Georgia uh, registration system. It is so valuable and so important. Uh, this is why we're having this forum because we wanna make sure that everybody has all of the information that they need. So when they go to make their decisions and their choices, um, there are no surprises and you can get the results that you intended to get, which is to cast your ballot and make sure that that ballot counts. Um, if a voter has a question or concern while they're at a polling location, who should they contact while they are there? At that polling location, there are two assistant managers there and there's a poll manager. Your first line of contact is to contact a member of the management at that polling location. If you're at a polling location and you feel you don't get a remedy to your uh, question, you can always escalate that to our office. Our office number is 770-920-7213. That is the Office of Registration and Elections. We will have upwards of 15 to 20 lines going on election day. Mm -hmm. So someone will uh, <laughs> answer your call and we can get uh, whatever situation that is going on resolved. But I repeat, uh -huh. don't wait until election day to check on your status or to check on your application. Because I will say this too, though, I know firsthand our office has tried to communicate with voters to address issues prior to election, and sometimes people wait. Got you. Got you. That's good to know. So, um, can a voter bring in their ballot already completed and take it into the booth with them as a guide, or do they have to render that ballot to you? Now, they, if they bring in their ballot, they won't be able to take it into the booth as a guide. But what they can do is, if you had that absentee ballot, you will surrender it. But prior to surrendering, you can get a copy. All of our precincts will have hundreds of sample ballots. The sample ballot has all of the choices for uh, this election. They're able to mark up a sample ballot, and you can take that sample ballot into the voting booth with you. That's good information. So again, you can get a sample ballot once you get to the elections office, or you can actually, you probably can print out a sample can ballot. print out to your take sample ballot you, to, take right, to take with you to make it uh, a lot faster because there's a lot on there, a lot of uh, ballot questions, and, and you know, it's a lot going on at that time. And so you want to make sure that you're marking the choices that you really do want. So we encourage you. Make sure you print out a sample ballot or when you get to the office that you get one, you look it over and you mark your choices maybe while you're standing in line. This is this is great information to have. If you do not have a print of these sample ballots, we'll be available at our office, uh, the elections office. That will be available at every county facility throughout Douglas County as well, including the tag and tax office, our libraries, any county facility that you go by will have copies of the sample ballot. That is great to know. So get by your local library, get by these uh, county offices and pick up a sa sample ballot. And not only for you, but I would encourage you that uh, if you have neighbors, especially older neighbors, get them this information. It just makes it easier for them uh, and, and it helps you and your neighbor and your community uh, if we all know what's going on. Uh, tell me, so I know we have our new ballot uh, system uh, and voter equipment in. Uh, will a voter get a receipt for the ballot that they cast? The only voter receipt that any voter will ever get is the I voted sticker. The reason why that is, 
Credit for voting is given when you check into a polling location. The registration piece of elections and registration is one thing, whereas the ballot is completely separate and not tied to you as an individual. If we gave a receipt to you, that means we will be tracking how you voted. That is not what we're here to do. The anonymity of the voting process remains, so that it's essentially uh, two processes happening simultaneously. At the first check, in station, you're given credit for voting. The second piece is you're actually casting your ballot, and it goes with all of the rest of the ballots cast so that you're able to maintain the anonymity of the voting process and not know how Sally or Sue votes. That That's is why there's great. no receipt. Thank you so much for clearing that up. So again, I your I voted sticker is your receipt. But just know your ballot is cast. Once you slot it through the machine, it is cast. It is counted. This is great information. Um, tell me, the night of the election, how will information be updated within Douglas County so we can start to see the outcomes as the night goes on? The state of Georgia uses a election reporting system. As we get uh, results in and we upload, we upload to the Secretary of State's office. Those uh, results are then populated uh, on uh, the application that the Secretary of State's office is viewing is also displayed on uh, TV screens. So that's how you see those tickers at the bottom uh, of screens. That's where that information is coming from. I will say I'm speaking for, and I can speak for Douglas County, but the information that we're disseminating here, this is uh, the same information for the entire state of Georgia. All of Georgia utilizes the same equipment and the same processes uh, for the most part. This is good. Great. So you have covered a myriad of information and we could probably, knowing you, we, we could probably make this conversation two more hours because there's a plethora of information um, around, you know, voting and making sure that these elections are fair and that everybody has the opportunity to cast their vote. Um, one of the things that I really want to say thank you on, Director Kidd, is that you are making it safe and easy to count your vote in Douglas. You guys have went above and beyond to ensure that every Douglas County citizen has the opportunity to cast a vote and that they have the opportunity to do it safely. COVID-19 has uh, given us um, a lot to account for. But I can clearly say, even if I was not commissioner in, here in Douglas County, that I truly feel safe casting my ballot in Douglas County. Safe, free, and fair elections are the, I guess, the, the first thing that is on the minds of myself and my staff when it comes to the electoral process. Because I'm not just spouting off uh, rhetoric. I truly believe this, and I truly believe that this is the one way in which a citizen can directly impact their community. So I'm committed to doing everything that I can humanly possible do to make sure that every time an individual votes in Douglas County, they can be assured that this is an accurate, fair, and free election. Uh, since I have you two, one last thing, too, though, yes. just a little piece of information. For individuals, either doing, it was just during the uh, advanced voting period where voters could call our office 24 hours in advance and schedule a ride to a polling location. We have worked it out with a partnership with Connect Douglas to have shuttles available even on election day for individuals that need a ride to a polling location, they're uh, able to call 24 hours in advance and allow us the time to schedule those out, even on election day. Can you give that number again so that people will know what number to call so that they can schedule a ride to the polls? 770-920-7213. That number, once again, is on the county's website at CelebrateDouglasCounty.com under elections. This is our main number. That is, you always want to dial our main number, 770-920-7213. Our main number rings to every phone in my office. And if you've ever called my office, my office answers phone calls. Yes, you do, because I have called several times and you guys are always always answering uh, again I 
this this is great to know that there are partnerships out there again, making sure that people can access their um, access the ballot box and make sure that they cast their ballot. Uh, I thank you for that, and I thank you for thinking about Douglas County uh, transportation and the Connect Douglas transportation in order to get our citizens to the polling locations. This is this is great information and great news, and I'm and I'm glad you're you're thinking about that and being in the forefront of it. I just want to say thank you again. This has just been a, a, an awesome, um, awesome get out the vote, you know, forum, um, early voter education. Uh, again, if you need any information, don't hesitate to contact Director Kidd or go to CelebrateDouglasCounty.com and find out more information under elections and registration. October 5th is the last day to register. By the time you see this, we hope that your registration will be in and that you will have a plan to vote. Until yes. next time, this is Trania Carthen. Thank you for being a part of this Get Out the Vote Early Voter Forum.